this evening we begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Opening hymn for this evening is found on the inside cover of our worship bulletin. which continues on to the top of page 3.
in your light we see light. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Lord God, you shine the light of your word into our hearts and enlighten our hearts by faith in Jesus, the light of the world and the Savior of us all. Help us to live in this light and to reflect that light into the lives of others until we see your divine glory face to face in heaven. We ask this in the name of our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. This week is Transfiguration Week. It is the last week in Epiphany. And, of course, this coming uh, Wednesday begins Lent with Ash Wednesday. And on this uh, day of Transfiguration, we see Jesus' divine glory shine forth as God strengthens him, uh, as we'll hear in our Gospel lesson, for his death that is about to take place soon in uh, Jerusalem. Our Epistle lesson... Uh, for this evening, is recorded in the second letter to the church in the city of Corinth, the fourth chapter beginning at the third verse. Paul writes, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers, so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Here ends our epistle lesson. Our psalm for this evening is taken from portions of Psalm 89. We begin by singing the refrain. <coughs> Here ends our gospel lesson. We now turn to our sermon hymn for this evening, 
hymn number 135. Hymn 135.
probably most torturous words you could say to a toddler or to a young child is, look, but don't touch. Look, but don't touch. And sometimes, uh, my mom would warn us, after maybe a cake was baked, maybe for the birthday or for guests coming, and we could see that thing sitting on the counter, looked awesome, looked very delicious, but don't you dare touch that. In our text for this evening, we hear that this applies to Moses. To Moses, as we hear about Moses' death and his very last hours of his life. And yet, in these words, in our Old Testament lesson for this evening, we're going to see that God always kept and always keeps his word and always fulfills his promises. Now, this entire text shows the fulfillment of all of God's words and as they were about to come true uh, to the Israelites. God kept his word to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And God said this, I swore on oath to them that I would make their uh, descendants as many as the stars in the sky or as much as the sand as are, are on the seashore. I think I kind of got a glimpse of what Abraham got to see when God took him out in the night and showed him the stars and said, Count them, if indeed you can count them, so shall your offspring be. And we were privileged to be out west, and, and with the plot place we were at, everybody said, you got to do stargazing. And we were shocked how many stars we could see out there. It was unbelievable. I thought it was great moving from Detroit to Exonia to be able to see the stars here. It didn't compare uh, to Death Valley. And so for the first time in my life, I think I understood what Abraham was looking at when God said, if indeed you can count them. God kept his word to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he also now kept his word, is about to fulfill his word to the 12 tribes. Because what is Moses doing? He's on the top of uh, Mount Nebo. And the text shows us how God starts in the north. And he showed him the entire land of Israel as he's standing there on Mount Nebo. And he's able to see the entire land that God is about to give you up and hand over the land of Canaan which would later become the land of Israel and of the 12 tribes of Judah. And uh, commentators and other people have said, when you get to stand on Mount Nebo in Moab, formerly Moab, as the text here from a good 3,000 years ago, it exactly describes what you still see today. I almost tried to have some slides ready for church, after church today, but just to show us what Moses got to see. And he was about to keep his word to the 12 tribes. And God, God also was keeping his word to Moses, although the word was not so pleasant. Because look how we said, we see God say to him, I have let you see the promised land with your own eyes, but you will not cross over into it. You can look, Moses, but you're not going to touch. And there was a reason behind that. Uh, Moses was very bitter about this. Uh, three times in Deuteronomy, we re have the Holy Spirit record how Moses pleaded and begged with the Lord, let me go into the promised land. And each time, and then until, until the final time when the Lord said, do not ask me any more about this. I have spoken, you're not going in. Well, why was Moses there only looking on the top of Mount Nebo and not being able to cross over? But it was his own sins. It was his own sins. That he and his brother Aaron, who now was also gathered to, his soul gathered to the Lord in heaven. And... At one point in time, Moses was supposed to preach gospel. That's what the Lord had asked him to do. The Israelites were without water, 
And the Lord wanted him to preach good news. How gracious and compassionate God is. And the Israelites had, had railed and complained and threatened Moses' life. So much so that Moses was so upset. God said to him, I want you to speak to the rock and water will flow from it. But Moses at that point in time, hot with anger, struck the rock with his staff and called the Israelites rabble rousers and here's the water the Lord was giving you. Because of that account, that's the point in time where the Lord said, because you did not honor me and keep my word and do what I had asked you to do, you are not going to, you and your brother Aaron are not going to enter the promised land of Canaan. So now, what do we hear? At the age of 120, Moses climbed Mount Nebo. But then look at the later description about Moses. Yet, when he died, his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. Uh, I, I got a chance to hike a little when we were out last weekend out west. And uh, we did a couple of miles, you know, here and there. I wasn't no 120 years old. So look at what Moses could do. He was able to do. His eyes were not weak. His body was strong. You're the 20, 120 year old guy climbing Mount Nebo. He didn't have to die. He wasn't weak. He wasn't frail. This guy was strong. But the Lord had said, you're not crossing over. He was going to die as the Lord had told him. So, on this day, we see Moses, the servant of the Lord, with whom, as the Lord says here, never again in the history of the Israelite people did anyone do the miracles that Moses had done. But his service was now over. And then God kept his word to Joshua and the Israelites. The first thing they did was they weeped and mourned for Moses those 30 days. But then... When it was time, God provided another leader for them. He provided the Holy Spirit upon Joshua so that he could serve ably. Moses laid his hands on him so that the Israelites listened to Joshua. And then they crossed over. And then in Joshua's lifetime, they conquered the land, a great portion of the land of Canaan. So God kept his word to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to the twelve tribes, to Moses, to Joshua, and all the Israelites remaining. And the reminder is there in this text for us tonight that God keeps his word and always fulfills his promises to us too. After all, where do we see Moses in our gospel lesson for today? We see him standing in glorious splendor talking with Jesus about his coming departure. Moses wrote about Jesus. Moses prophesied uh, how he would serve. And here's Jesus speaking with Moses and Elijah, two pillars of the Old Testament, and they're both in glorious splendor. Now, for us today, too, look how the world has kind of been rocked. War is going on very openly. It's on the news. People are all worried about it. There's stuff that happens in our lives too that is very unsettling and sometimes uh, almost earth shattering for us. And yet, what is going to be able to be said for us too in our lives? That the Lord is going to keep and fulfill His word and His promises to each and every one of us, no matter what's going on in our lives. Just like no matter that it was Moses' last day, on the top of Mount Nebo, that he is alive and well and with the Lord in heaven. And at the appropriate day and time, you and I are going to also appear with the Lord in glorious splendor. But why? Why? When the Lord brought his children of Israel into the land of Canaan and gave it to them as their future possession, was it because God was so worried about a plot of land? It was absolutely not. It was because he was so worried about the fulfillment of who was going to be born there, 
many years later in that little, little town in Bethlehem in Ephrathah. Our Savior Jesus, the Savior of the world. That's what God was so concerned about when he made the promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that from your descendants, the seed of the woman will come forth, the Savior of the world. This was all in keeping with God's promise that he made to Adam and Eve in the garden. It's the same promise that he's made to us. And at the appropriate time, we are all going to be standing in glorious splendor by faith in Jesus on that last day. So what a gracious, faithful, compassionate God that we have. That your future glory is rest assured. And that our awesome heavenly kingdom is being prepared by Jesus himself who said he's preparing it for us. So continue to trust these words of the Lord. Sometimes we're shaken. Sometimes we're like Moses, a little bitter. But the Lord's going to all make it good for us. His own promise, through his own son who died for us as his departure, as we're now about to start Lent, as we focus on that coming departure. He did it all for us, so that we could live with him. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep and guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We turn to the top of page 6 in our worship bulletins as we join together in the two hymn verses there. Insert sheet in our worship. 